Let's take a look at the first eight bars of Body and Soul. I'm going to play the first eight bars in a way you ain't never heard it. All right, but check this out. <laughs> bars of body and soul is really just those three songs mashed up together at least the harmony so it can be really easy to recognize what's going on this is the real jazz backing tracks body and soul one that's in concert let's go through every single chord change i'm using this one because it has this play along and also the tempo is just right for you to like really get it under your skin and really hear, be able to anticipate what's coming next. And mostly these are the changes that I've always played using this song as opposed to the ones that are in the real book. All right, so let's do it. Uh, so the first thing that you notice is, like I said before, this is rhythm changes. However, rhythm changes is one, six, two, five. And this one is two, six, two, five, where the six is dominant and obviously the five chord is dominant. So the two chord is a substitute for the one chord. So really it's just rhythm changes. Let's hear what it sounds like when I substitute the two chord for the one major seven chord. Let's hear that. You might think, okay, I need to use the Dorian scale on the first chord and then the second chord. That's the fifth mode of Dorian major seven. And forget all of that. There's one scale that you can play that has all the notes you need. And it's really just a minor bebop scale. So starting your concert E flat, I'm gonna talk about this as like it's in concert. <laughs> This is the bebop scale that has a chromatic passing tone between the flat seven and the root. So we're using the major seven, 
which is the leading tone, as the chromatic passing tone. When we get to the dominant seven, the sixth dominant, that's when that becomes the active chord tone. So we get this kind of thing. If you think about it, you can use that on any type of rhythm changes, one, six, two, five, because it's the same basic thing. All right. Now, this T for two section here, every time I've ever played T for two, it's always been the one to the four dominant, three to six dominant. But in this case, we substitute the six dominant for the flat three diminished. This is called a tritone substitution. Usually, we substitute a dominant seven chord for a dominant seven chord to try tone away. But this song is older and they use a lot of diminished chords. So we're substituting the dominant seven for the diminished chord. Which diminished chord? We have this E diminished chord. In jazz, there are no triads. And also there's no such thing really as a diminished seventh. That seventh is really a sixth. And since we don't have triads, there's really, it's just kind of redundant to call it anything other than just diminished. So whenever I'm referring to diminished chords, I'm referring to the four notes, the four note diminished chord. Okay, but at any rate, we have this E diminished. So let's play those four bars. So we got the one, four dominant seven, three minor seven, flat three diminished. And then that goes to the On Green Dolphin Street section, which brings us back to the two chord, because the one, four dominant, three, flat three diminished is a way of setting us up to get back to the two chord. Then we get to the two chord, and then we do that on green Dolphin Street descending type thing. Sounds like this. On, on green Dolphin Street, that thing happens twice. Here, it only happens once. So it's like, if you know, I got rhythm. If you know T for two, if you know On Green Dolphin Street, you can play this song. We just need to watch out where those exceptions are, like the two minor seven, like Coltrane uses on Countdown as a substitute for the one, and that diminished as a tritone sub for the dominant seven chord. So the On Green Dolphin Street section, that descending thing, so the on green dolphin street section that sets us up to land on the six chord the six minor seven once we get to the six minor seven which is diatonic unlike the first six that we were on, which was diet, which was non-diatonic, it was dominant. Once we get there, then it's just a two, five, one, and then we do the one back to the two chord, only it's slightly different. Instead of one to the four dominant, three minor seven, flat three diminished, now we have the one to the four dominant, now the three is a minor seven flat five then to the regular five instead of having a substitute. So having that F minor seven flat five is a way of very strongly implying a flat nine on the dominant seven chord that's coming on the B flat seven. Sounds like this. Let's play the whole sequence actually. <laughs>
All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I got some shirts here. I got some links in the description box if you want to pick up some merchandise. I also have my own stuff. I got some mugs and other stuff like that. Of course, I do have my Altissimo books for alto and tenor, my All Things Diminished book for all instruments, and I do have my saxophone sound development book that is available for all saxophones. If you like this kind of content and you want to support the channel, you can buy me a delicious piece of cake. It's like Patreon or Kickstarter, one of these kind of things, one of these donation type of things. And uh, I appreciate those of you who have done that. Thank you a lot. The second time through the A section, once we get to the second ending, we land on the one chord and then we just do a 2-5 into the key change, which goes up a half step. The bridge of this song is one that I wish was in a lot more other songs and not just jazz and like pop songs and everything because it's so diatonically beautiful. So much of what I'm showing you on my channel is how to negotiate through diatonic stuff, but still make it sound cool. Don't just play all the, the white key notes, so to speak. This song is really very, very diatonic. When we get to the bridge, it gets even more diatonic. All it really is, is the one, the two chord, the three chord, but most often it's played with the, uh, the one chord with the three in the bass, so that way you get this really nice lead up into a two five to the flat three. We don't actually go to the flat three though. What we actually do is go to the major three, and then we play that diatonic three, six, two, five, one. We don't even play a dominant seven on that six chord. Sounds like this. <laughs> And then three, six, two, five, one. When we get to the second half of the bridge, it sounds like it modulated to the relative minor, but technically it just modulated down a whole step. The way it gets into the second half of the bridge is what gives it that illusion. If you fall for that, you might wind up with problems. Oh no. But if you understand that this actually just modulated down a whole step from D major to C major, then it makes a lot of sense because in the key of C, we just have our D minor seven to G seven, two, five, and then three. And then instead of going to the six, we have that substitute for the six dominant, which is the flat three diminished again. So we got D minor seven to G seven, E minor seven to E flat diminished. That diminished takes us down a half step to D minor seven to G seven. And then where we would resolve this to C, it goes to a C seven, which really this bar is just setting us up to get back to that two chord. So this little chromatic line, C7, B7, B flat seven, is really just a substitute for the one, four, three, six, or one, four dominant seven, three, flat, flat three diminished. And then the rest of this is what I already said. So let's hear what that sounds like. <laughs> So when we get to that B flat seven, we can either do a B flat seven flat 13. We can do a B flat seven flat nine. People alter it usually in those two ways. And then the rest of the song is really just the same as the beginning of the song. All right. One of the scales that we can definitely use for this is the blue scale. And I do not like to abandon the blue scale, but let's not just learn the blue scale. Because I'm assuming that by the time you get into playing this song, you already know it. But we're going to play our E flat, your E flat, not concert, your E flat blue scale. <laughs> Let's learn it in the altissimo register. I have videos on this already, but I might as well put it in here so that way it's one collective unit and you can get it all at once. Okay, so once we get to the E flat, 
In order to play F sharp, I do one, three, four with the E flat key. That puts my hands in a really nice position to get to the G sharp, which is one, two, three, and side C. Make sure these notes aren't pushing too sharp, okay? So then we go from the G sharp to A, which is just three, and then we go to B flat, all right, so we can add the palm D to that A fingering. And then for D flat, the one key, and then all open for altissimo E flat. And then to really put some stank on it, you can play that, uh, the G flat above it, which I use four, side E, and the E flat key. That's one of the fingerings that I use for it. Piece of cake. Let's play through it. Mm-hmm. 